uh, today, guys, I will present you the report portal. It is our uh, solution accelerator, which was originally born inside the EPAM and now uh, have been open sourced and have a great, pretty good success at the test automation market and open source. And now I just will describe you what we have. Uh, the presentation will consist of two main parts. Uh, first of the, uh, it, it will be the presentation of the report portal itself with the showcase. And the second part will be about the machine learning, the algorithm which used inside of it uh, to identify your fails. Well, uh, first of all, let us let me introduce myself. My name is Dmitry Guminyuk. I'm a, a project manager and delivery manager uh, in EPAM and already working more than 10 years with it. I have a development background and currently leading the initiatives development at Test Competency Center. And uh, basically, I'm the product owner of the report portal and uh, the guy who drives the idea around it and makes this thing running. Most of you have heard that we have the competency centers inside EPAM. Uh, but what is that uh, by the original? And I can say that it's kind of the collaboration of the experience of the people, uh, of skills, what we have uh, for particular domain or te te technique. So basically, that is the place where we collect all the experience from projects, the positive experience, the negative experience. And it is, it is the place where we can see that we have a gaps in uh, processes, we have a gaps in some specific domains, we have something with, that can be fixed. And in order to make it work more uh, productively, we can create these solutions and uh, solution accelerators. Uh, basically, those solutions will accelerate the speed of our develop, de delivery, will accelerate the uh, quality and accelerate everything we have around this delivery. And one of such solutions which I will present you today is the report portal. So where it started from? Uh, and first of all, I really need to uh, share with you that the op report portal have been open sourced already almost for the one year. And we have a pretty quickly growing community in open source from all of, all, all of the countries and all, all of the world. And it's available under the GPL free or license. It's uh, juice of the open source. So you can just freely copy, share, run and study it uh, with no any payments. So it's free to use and free of charge. Where it uh, starts from? So as you may know, the EPAM is pretty big. We have a lot of projects and uh, we have a lot of projects starting with the test automation each year. So we decided, okay, if we have more than 100 projects, we started with test automation each year uh, and each of these projects spends the time to implement the test automation reporting to uh, let's make something robust and uh, like stable for everyone and uh, save those two, three weeks for each project to start with the reporting. Because uh, just multiply these 100 projects with two, three weeks and you will have a lot of time to, for it. So the initial idea was to implement something like standard for all the report, reports uh, in test automation for EPAM. But we decided to go even deeper with that. And we make the audits among different projects to find out why the test automation fails at the project, why we have the problems in test automation and why it's not really so productive as expected. And the most of those issues are really about the visibility. And uh, more than 70% of all projects uh, reported us that they have no visibility into the state of the test automation and have no idea what is happening with the test automation at the project. So here are the most common issues with the test automation visibility uh, in EP, not only in EPAM projects, but uh, on the vendor side as well. So sometimes coverage can grow slower than was planned initially, and usually it leads to the failed expectation from the customer side. Uh, sometimes the implemented uh, test cases in test automation can be implemented but due to some reasons uh, not to be included in the particular execution and in this case you have like invested the money into the implementation but have a zero value as a result sometimes then can be implemented run but not analyzed and in this case uh, you still invest the money but do not get the result and the most common issue is that test automation is just not unstable 
and uh, fail not because of the product bugs, but fail because of the code reasons. And in this case, the team spent all the effort just to stabilize the code and do not find the bugs, do not run regressions, and waste the money, waste the effort, and do not bring the result. So we decided that we need to give this visibility for the project. And uh, we put the next ideas behind the report portal uh, to like to, to create the product. So first of all, is to give you the live and real-time visibility into the health of your test automation at the project to give you the real-time reporting with a lot of different features. And we also decided that we need to reduce the effort to analyze the results uh, of your uh, reports in test automation and the it's it really pretty useful thing for the huge projects for example if you have huge distributed environments with a lot of uh, combinations of uh, operation systems and browsers uh, you definitely will have tons of and dozens and dozens of reports in different systems and you really need to review all of them so report portal helps with you with, with that it also uh, support with the most popular automation tools and let's say we support most uh, trend making uh, test automation engines uh, we've pre-configured and implemented and all the production tested uh, integrations which are available on github uh, we also put the idea to give you the metrics and dashboards out of the box you know the managers live love the metrics the managers love the dashboards and graphics so you will have all of this uh, based on your data right from out of the box for the managers and there is no need to do a lot of magic and the pretty important thing also is that it can be used with any existing solution already uh, and there is no need to re-implement your test cases just to make it uh, workable with the uh, with your solution because report portal will be integrated with uh, engine which runs test cases but not with the test cases itself and the pretty uh, interesting and inspiring thing for the our uh, work for the next year is to bring the artificial intelligence into the uh, test automation, into the test automation reports analysis. And this is, will be the second part of my presentation coming next. Well, uh, let's see what is the report portal itself. It is the landing page of the report portal, which is available under this site like reportportal.io and he, it represents the main features we have. We also have, uh, this is the uh, login page and as you can see we have the Twitter feed with the news and I do the login into the application right now and the, pro the objects which we have here. The main one is the project spaces, it separates each project from another. We have the configuration for the project and I also have the demo data. Uh, since then you will first log in into the application, it will have no any data inside of it. And now I have generated the uh, some basic reports, demo reports, and as they, you can see they fly in in runtime and the same like all your test automation reports will be available for you in runtime and there is no need to wait until full the execution will be finalized during the night you will see results in the report portal just in a few seconds and you can see how the test cases are passing or failing for your first steps and what i'm doing now i'm drilling down to the test case um, opening up it via via the structure by by the names uh, of suits folders and subfolders whatever you have in, in your test automation and at the same time you also can drill down to it via the selections and as you can see the how the report portal provide the way it asks you to review all the items which should be to investigate to investigate it basically that means when you execute uh, your test automation and something fails or have errors uh, report portal will mark it with to investigate and you should review them. And at test case level where we are right now, we will have all these uh, logs related to this particular test case, the screenshots, the binary data, everything can be attached here uh, to, the, to the test case. And here also the pretty useful uh, tool we call it history line so basically just in one click you can access the status of the previous execution of this particular test case and find if there was any issues with that before 
and also you can see the uh, the condition what was made by the previous engineer and as you can see right now I'm um, choosing the feature which really separates us from any other solution on the market you can categorize the reason of your uh, failed test case so basically when you find the uh, failed test case and you see that it is the reason uh, and it failed because of the product bug you can put the this um, defect type for this particular fail so like associate this failed test case with the reason which will represent that it's a product bug and now i'm uh, putting it as a product bug save the comment for it i also can attach here the links the screenshots and uh, whatever i need for that and sometimes for some projects uh, it's not enough to have just the regular product information and system issues categories you also can add the uh, custom defect type and for example represent that we have the bug on ui uh, set the particular color for it and now I will return to the uh, the same failed test case and now choose another type of the defect it will represent that okay, okay it's a group of the product bugs and is it is the bug on UI all the actions which was made will be available in history of actions so you can always find who have changed uh, this issue type and who have put it the particular value for it and um, as you can see it also updated in history line and the thing is that it also updated in this st full structure so as i said oh, everything works in runtime so as soon as you change something as soon as you change the state and defect type the category uh, it will be updated for all the structure and it will be available for all the team at the same time also pretty uh, useful feature right here is the ability to post the bug right from this screen into the bug tracking system and to attach the screenshots logs comments whatever you have for this item and as you can see the bug is uploaded uh, into the bug tracking system the link created for it and also right from this screen you can see the status of your bug in, inside the bug tracking system so how it can help you for example if uh, you will find that in history line in previous fails you have assigned uh, bug and it still uh, and now it has uh, the status of, as closed but the issue is still reproducible in by the test automation it's really the point to reopen this bug so as you see you have the link to it right here you can just in one click open it uh, here how the issue will look in in bug tracking system and it will have the back traceable links th from the Jira in this case and we have the integration with uh, um, TFS, Rally, and Jira for now. And you will have the traceable links from Jira, uh, Jira to report portal and from report portal to your bug tracking system as well. You also can load existing issues, not only um, uh, created one, and it will, will work uh, the same like uh, the issues which will be posted right from the report portal screen. At the same time, we have pretty useful feature right here. It's called matched issue, and uh, how it works? It basically looking for the same for the similar issues inside one particular execution. So the use case for it, for example, if you have uh, one hundred test cases, and uh, half of them, like fifty of them, failed because of the login issue, and you find that uh, one test case failed because of a login issue, the next failed also because of the login issue you just can click the match issue in launch and uh, report portal will find all the equal fails and copy the resolution to this issue with all the details um, it is the match issue but also we have the auto analysis issue which helps you to categorize your fails uh, based on history of your executions so let me switch it here and as you can see the as i said the statistics will be updated i was updated in runtime uh what and what i made right now i did the analysis for the previous executions just moving all the two investigated items for particular uh categories uh like categorize them as a product back on ui for previous executions 
So like made prepare, I have prepared the learning set for the analysis of the latest execution. And what I do right now, as you can see, we have 19 items to be investigated by the engineer or by the report portal. And now I just will trigger the analysis feature. And as you can see, we have 19 of them. And after refresh, just seven of them left. So basically that means that report portal find the uh, similar 12 issues inside the this particular execution and mark with them with the defect named as a bug on UI. It copy all the uh, bugs which was posted for this particular issue and all and also mark it as the outer system and basically means that this item was analyzed by the report portal. So this feature really helps you to work with the results. It basically uh, utilize and uh, use all the history of your fails inside your project space to categorize the fails. And what I did right now, I also, via the configuration page, you also can make the auto analysis to be executed right after the uh, each of the execution finalized. And that means that as soon as the auto analysis, as soon as the launch will be finished, the auto analysis will start to review the, the results and analyze your fails. Basically, this feature really helps you to uh, work with your routine uh, report analysis and it helps you to categorize your fails according to your categories you have. So uh, since you have a lot of, uh, can have a lot of data in one particular project space, you also can filter uh, your executions and you can use the uh, text for it. Uh, and the text is the most flexible thing for filtering. You can put the uh, mobile executions, for example, executions for particular browsers, for particular operation systems, or even builds. And using these uh, tags, uh, using those filters, which also can be used as a uh, fil uh, as a tab, tabs, uh, which can separate uh, the work from for different teams. For example, you have team A for the, uh, which work with one particular executions, and team B for which works for, with another part. You can separate those executions using those tags, filters, and uh, tabs. Uh, also, those filters will be used, uh, will be stored as a separate instances, and they will be used for building the uh, widgets. The widgets and dashboards, it is the part which helps you to represent the state of your test automation in graphical view. So basically, uh, here's the demo dashboard which created with this uh, demo set, but also there is a list of available uh, templates. And as you can see right now, we also have those bugs on UI which color it. And basically, in most of the systems, you have uh, such kind of the report where you can see only past failed items, but you have those red test cases and cannot really say what, what is the reason of those fails. Is all the um, failed uh, test cases fails because of the product bugs and you have a lot of bugs on UI or in, in your application or all those issues are failed because of instability of the test automation. And with the report portal, since your team and since the report portal can categorize your fails, you will see re the real value of your test automation. You will see how it, uh, where it belongs to. You also, for example, at this the, uh, widget, you can see how your team analyzes the result. And definitely you have uh, to have 100% of the analysis. You can see how many, how test cases growing. Uh, you can see the most failed test cases, the uh, gr grouping by the particular bugs, fails uh, in which uh, test case view, the summaries, the durations, the pie charts, and many, many more. Also, we will release soon the flaky tests widget, which will help you to find the most Flakiest test inside your executions, the most longest test, and many, many more other widgets which are available uh, and will be also available soon with new builds. Uh, so here I'm showing how you can create your own dashboard, uh, new dashboard. Add the select the uh, template of the widgets from here. Select the filter. 
select the criteria which you want to represent at this widget, set the name for it, add it, and voila, we have it with the same uh, view. And you can uh, configure it for the presentation. Also, we have the full screen mode where you can uh, even put it like on TV screen for the client. The also pretty important thing that the report portal is not like closed uh, solution, but we have the open API. And this API actually helps you to make a lot of magic with it. Uh, via the API, you can do whatever you want and do almost the same and even more what, what is available for the uh, application. And um, with this API, you also can create the pretty customizable integrations with your solutions. And also you can integrate the report portal as a part of your uh, pipeline. So basically you can retrieve the results from the report portal and make it the part of your pipeline which will uh, return you the feedback for the particular build. Is it acceptable to go or is it still have a lot of issues and so on and so forth. So basically that is it for the uh, showcase part. Um, if you guys have any questions, yeah, I see uh, there are two of them. Which bug tracking systems um, it's supported? Right now it supports the Jira, Rally, uh, TFS, um, it's some sort of the support. Uh, we're also considering about the Trello, uh, Bugzilla, and uh, uh, one more test trail to implement. Uh, what about the cases when the Jira on the customer side? Uh, if you have a VPN connection for the uh, environment where you have installed the report portal, your own report portal, then it's not a problem. But if you have the closed uh, Perimeter for the uh, of the client, you can just deploy the own instance of the report portal on client uh, client side, and then you will have access to the Jira on the customer side. Uh, how does the report portal integrate with Allure? Oh, <laughs> it's a great question, but uh, uh, the report portal and Allure it's uh, different things. It's it's not like the uh, report portal will integrate with Allure, but report portal can actually replace the Allure. And in this case, uh, report portal is much more powerful tool than Allure. Uh, there, there are a lot of um, conferences we, where we'll discuss it. And uh, the thing is that to compare the Allure framework and the report portal is like to compare the, uh, I don't know, the uh, paper plane and the Boeing plane uh, in the sky. So it's uh, things of really different size. And let's move to the next part. And this is more most juicy per part about the machine learning. But first of all, let me finalize the few steps about the showcase. Well, um, just to summarize, uh, the report portal can help you to manage all your automation results in, and reports just in one place. Uh, so if you have the distributed environments and a lot of different types of executions and also you use different types of the testing, UI testing, uh, backend testing, and different, uh, even different uh, engines, for example, testing and SOAP UI to execute the test cases, you will have all the results in one place, in one format of the representation. And this, is, this will help you to really uh, integrate and consolidate all your results for the presentation in one place. It's really helpful. It also makes the test automation uh, results actionable and collaborative. So basically the team which works with all your results can review those fails, uh, mark and associate with particular reason of fail. Uh, and really, it really helps you to make test automation status visible for everyone and make it visible for the uh, development team and for managers. It really established the fast trace, uh, traceability with defect management. Uh, you have the, with the, the same like with traceability of your bug tracking systems and uh, with your requirements. At the same time, it really accelerates your routine result analysis and the machine learning and the result analysis really helps you here with this part. 
it really vis visualizes your metrics and the analytics uh, what you have and the thing is that there is no need for you to let's say play with excel and build all those graphics uh it will be built based on your statistic and everything you have inside the report portal based on your executions and it helps you to make the smart decisions together and make the automation results a, a part of your pipeline of your development pipeline and the report portal can return you the state of your for example regression for the particular build and help the pipeline to decide is it built uh, good to go or not to go uh, for for the next pipeline steps Okay, the, once again, the report portal is free to use, free of charge, and uh, available on GitHub. And the question you may ask right now, how you can find it? So the availability of it, uh, pretty easy. And uh, it can be installed uh, on premises, on client side, on your own local environment. Uh, in case, and this is the answer for the question by Ira, Irina in chat, that uh, in case if you have the closed environments, closed environment uh, at, your, at your client side, you can deploy your own instance of the report portal on the client side and use it with the infrastructure of the client. And uh, it also pretty useful in case of you execute the results, not on the EPUM side, but if you execute, execute the results on the client side. So it's pretty uh, easy to install using the Docker and just uh, copy and then load the compose file at the GitHub and execute one command uh, like Docker compose up. And in just in 10 minutes or so, you will have your own instance of the report portal. Integration. The, uh, there are two types of integrations. The real-time integration, it, re it integrates with your testing engine adapters. And and the post processing upload like you also can import your results uh, after the execution finalized uh, but really really um, suggest you to use the real-time integration because with the real time you will get much more benefits with just the importing, importing the completed results for the real-time integration uh, it's just a few hours to integrate and the mo most important thing that there is no refactoring required for your test cases because once again report portal will be integrated with your testing engine using adapters and this is the list of already existing adapters which are available on github uh, it was it also tr all tested in production and uh, good to go with your project the main uh, main outcome from this slide uh, means that if it's just few hours to try no refactoring required there are a list of available uh, agents it's pretty cheap for you to try the report portal for your project so basically that means if you uh, just a few hours to integrate it costs almost nothing for your project and if you don't like it it's also also pretty easy to turn it off for your project and in scope of for example one week of your uh, effort of your engineer it costs almost nothing to try it well and now the juicy of my presentation the smart analysis the uh, machine learning part and something interesting uh, that I will try to explain in easy words. So uh, we are working on idea to bring the artificial intelligence in testing. And uh, according to the uh, trends in testing and in automation, uh, in also in artificial intelligence, which tries to step in into the development cycle, the automation will be the first step for it to enter the software development cycle and um, the part we are trying to implement it is the machine learning what is the machine learning itself it is the type of processes uh, of the artificial intelligence uh, which based on the learning and basically what it does it looks for the most similar uh, decisions and the most similar ways to solve the problem based on the uh, huge learning set so basically the machine learning the, those algorithms using the most equal and uh, looking like yours uh, problem right now and says okay if we find it, it if it looks like that and have decision like that 
most likely the your particular task will be also uh, completed in the same way like I found in all this big set. And we tried and working with the, those two types of the algorithms. Uh, one of them is key and then it name it uh, will pronounce like uh, key na nearest neighbors and the gradient boosting. The KNN is much easier and quicker to learn uh, and this, uh, quicker to train. The, and the gradient boosting is much more harder and much more harder to train. And um, we've completed our um, uh, steps with KNN and maybe one day we'll try the gradient boosting to get the more results with that. Uh, machine learning. It's pretty easy, I, I think. Uh, it, and the, all the machine learning is about this, uh, then this part, uh, also some parts of uh, this, this, and uh, just this left. And if you will get this, you will know and you will understand what is the machine learning. The main problem may be just to understand how this part uh, comes to this part, and uh, this is, guys, the moment when you can just <laughs> leave, stop it and leave the presentation and say, okay, I don't get it. I will just go and listen to any any other presentation, for example, on how to become the senior. But uh, let me try to explain it in simple words uh, and with the uh, basic uh, cats and rabbits to give the understanding how it works uh, and how it really finds the uh, data inside the big amount of data. So what we will do with the machine learning and what are our steps? Uh, our goal is to categorize and group the fails what we have inside our data. So basically, for the most uh, executions as the for, for the most reports we will have such a representation so you have the number of test cases some of them passed some of them failed and skipped and uh, for the part which failed you cannot uh, see what it, why it's actually failing is it all the product bugs or is it the automation issues or even maybe it's even a system issue when your environment is not available and um, it much more uh, Available if you have the all these failed items categorized, so you can say which are one of them is a product box, which one of the those are bug on UI or maybe automation issues or system issues. And the goal of our machine learning algorithms it, it to define which category belongs your particular fail. So how we will do it? We will use the uh, data set of your previous executions, the history of your executions and history of your fails to uh, compare with the latest executions. So basically for the machine learning, you need two parts. The, you need the big set of data uh, and it is called like training set. Uh, and the second part, you need the uh, category. So like you need the decision voice based on this learning set. And if you have uh, your fails categorized with a particular reason that is, that is all we need to train the machine uh, algorithms and uh, where we'll get those learning set we will get it from the our production instance uh, for now we have more than 170 uh, projects uh, running at the rpepam.com and we have really a lot of data to work with so we will use it to train our algorithms and uh, in most cases your uh, so what, what we will use to identify the fail of course we will take the stack trace and the which will describes the reason of uh, uh, your fail of your particular fail so we will have the stack trace which describes what reason of your fail you have and just don't try to read it right now i will describe it uh, show you in a bigger screen later but in most cases how we can compare with that you have the similar issue or similar fail we can just take the next fail and compare it with it and in most cases we can say okay it's equal for the 95 percent then guys maybe it's the same fail and just let, let's um, uh, mark it with the same fa reason of fail.
And it was the our first solution how we worked with, the, with this, but there is a problem around that. And uh, there is a little thing which really ruins the statistics and ruin, ruins the um, quality of this analysis. And this thing is about the size of the stack trace. Uh, the main like value you have in, t in your test automation really placed like that, like here in stack trace. In this stack trace, you describe um, what happened actually with your fail, and you describe what was not equal uh, for some particular uh, fail. Next, it is here. Next comes the default assertion problem. Uh, next comes also the available part, which shows you where this issue was happened, and then comes the stack trace. And this is the uh, bubbling of your error, which uh, uh, goes through all the levels of your abstractions in your framework, and usually it equally for every single fail in your test automation. What's the important thing from here? Maybe just one point here that uh, you have public static void main at the beginning of all your executions and nothing more. And the problem is about that it sometimes can be equal to 95 of those percents uh, which really influences on the result analysis. So the main goal is to cut this tail and remove it from the analysis. And this is the first step for the machine learning algorithms which should define in all stack traces this useless uh, tail. It should remove and uh, clean all the stack traces from this uh, tail to make uh, text more available for analysis. Let's say to clean this text, or dry this text, or remove the informational um, noise. Then we come to the next part. We'll have this uh, upper side of your logs and we need to proceed, proceed it. The uh, process of clean, cleaning this text uh, before analysis uh, called like the removing of the informational noise. And uh, the noise will look like that. For example, you also, always you have, will have the timestamps in every single uh, line. So the problem is that if you will, for every single and every different execution of your test case, you will have different timestamp. And this can influence on the result of the analysis. So we need to replace it with the timestamp, uh, like for example, just time. Uh, we also can have uh, the, uh, we need to remove the, all those punctuations, like dots, uh, braces, semicolons, and everything else. This also should be removed. We also should replace the capital letters with the uh, low low case letters to avoid the difference uh, of lowercase and uh, ca uh, camel cases. We also need to remove all the numbers and the uh, those oh, I forget how it called like uh, all these but and or is are and and else. So when the text is ready, we also we are ready to go with that. And uh, what we'll make, we will re-execute or during the every execution, we will collect more and more similar text and uh, clean text to work with. So basically, uh, when this text collected, we need something to really quickly search for it uh, from this text. And in this case, we need any some engine which will help us to really quickly look for all the details from all this text and we actually have this solution it called the elastic search it is the real time almost real time search engine uh, which helps you to find the data amount huge uh, uh, data set uh, the pretty useful points for us uh, about it that it's open source and so we can also use it with our solution. It helps to make the full text search pretty quick and have almost real time uh, response. Uh, it's scalable and can be uh, scaled for big size and it's really helpful for our 
uh, production instance when we have a huge load and can scale also the uh, Elasticsearch to cover all our needs. So how it can help us? It can help us to find the particular words in particular places uh, in all logs we have. And uh, for example, the use case to give to give you an understanding how where you can use the elastic search as well, it's the search at any site. So like when you type any word at the site search, the elastic can help you to find any document where these words uh, appears. So the same it will help us uh, with, the, with the machine learning. So as soon as we have a lot of uh, executed items, a lot of um, text which repeated in time to time, we can collect the uh, frequency metrics, how often this award repeated for a particular type of the fail. And for example, collect the next metrics. For example, the, this word repeated for the seven times, this word repeated for two times, and basically having these metrics, we will move to the uh, frequency characteristics. And the Part of the machine learning where it comes, uh, it is named the TF-IDF metric. Basically, this metric represents how often this word appears in the document and how important this word among all different documents, among all the documents you have inside the library. So, uh, basic example. For example, we have the uh, fairy tale uh, book which consists of the 100 words in your library. And uh, your, all your library consists of uh, 10 million books. So in this uh, book, we have six times mentioned uh, the word rabbit. And that basically means that uh, for T TF uh, index, the TF stands for term frequency. So this word repeated six times uh, in, in 100 words for this document. And this TF index means uh, like 0.06. The IDF index, it inverse uh, document frequency, basically means that, uh, for example, if we have this word repeated in 1000 books, among all your 10 million books. So the, you will have a logarithm uh, of inverse uh, frequency of this document and it will equal to four. So basically the TF-IDF index for this uh, uh, word will be like dot, uh, 0 0.24. And these metrics, this uh, metric, this uh, um, frequency characteristics help us uh, to identify how this word important for a particular document and how this word important into the categorization of the particular type of the document. So basically, if you have the, uh, around this word, you will have more words about like once upon a time or about the uh, carrot, the forest, wolf, or any other, uh, the algorithm can define that this book is about the fairy tale about the small rabbit. And for example, if you have more words in it about the uh, bus, about the ticket, and about that nobody paid for it, you definitely will have the story about the guys who do not pay the tickets in uh, public transportation. And this is the principle how uh, the machine learning works inside the report portal as well. Since we have all these words uh, which belongs to the different categories, for example, like to the product box, the system issues, or the automation issues, uh, and this categorization made by humans at the beginning, the machine learning can understand uh, how this uh, document, how this particular stack trace belongs to a particular reason of the fail. And since we have all these uh, uh, metrics, the frequency metrics, it can be represented in a vector view. So basically, uh, analyzing the text with the machine learning algorithms means to convert the, your huge text into the uh, mathematical vector.
And this vector will uh, be placed on the multidimensional space where each dimension belongs to the particular word. So just to give you the understanding with a uh, basic example, we will take two dimensional space with the word exception and word ex expected. So as more words uh, appear around the expected and you categorize it as a product bug, that means that word expected influence on the product bugs more than any other. For the uh, word expect exception, you definitely like have categorization of the product box, and that means that the word exception more influence of the on the stack trace of the uh, automation issue if you have it. For example, if you will have something more, and it will be categorized as a system issue, it ha will have also almost equal belonging to the exception item and the uh, to the after exception word and expected word and for example if we'll have something here like not investigated item the question is where will this item belongs to so like it's new fail uh, which should be categorized so how the machine learning uh, defines where this item belongs to it really uh, builds the decision boundaries between uh, the existing areas of fails. So like it builds this decision boundary, which means that everything which down below this line will definitely below belongs to uh, the system issue. And everything which is upper this line uh, will belongs to the product bug. The same decision boundary will be between product bug and to investigate issue. Uh, here will be behind the be, between the to investigate and automation issue. Here between system issue and to investigate and to uh, automation issue. And here is the decision boundary between system issue and uh, to investigate item. So basically, we see that currently this item is in the area of influence uh, of uh, system issue. So basically, the machine will decide that it is the system issue. But now you can ask me the question, why? And this, we have just few millimeters and few steps to the area of influence of the to investigate category. Why it, so like, why those small distance uh, can influence on it? And the answer is pretty simple that this is just an example of two-dimensional influence. So that, that basically means that it influence it, it based on the stack trace that which consists only two words, expected and exception. But in most examples, you have much more dimension. And for example, if you have the third dimension here, it will uh, influence on this item as well. And maybe in a third dimension, it will much more closer to the product bug or maybe to investigate the item. And as more text and as more words, as more uh, dimensions we have for this vector, more close machine learning can identify where this item belongs to. So this is the basic uh, description how the categorization key and N works. And the same we do inside the report portal. But the problem about this particular representation, it is the uh, builded areas. So what it means, in order to make the machine learning to uh, categorize your latest execution, it should have the training model, uh, which already like uh, something which already trained the uh, your set, trained your mechanism, algorithm, and this algorithm will use this baseline to compare all the next fails. The problem, problem with this approach is that uh, you can train your uh, set today and use it for the next, uh, I don't know, five months. The problem is that during those five months, you can have changes uh, for your fails. And uh, machine learning will use only those outdated uh, model uh, an outdated scratch to analyze your fails. Uh, 
In this case, the uh, lazy machine learning comes for help. Yes, the machine learning also can be lazy. Not only humans, but, but also the machine learning can be lazy. And um, this example is uh, about non-lazy uh, learning. And basically, that means that it creates the uh, modules and areas, those uh, scratches, before the analysis. And the lazy learning makes uh, the uh, prepare those areas for analysis right before the request. So basically that means that when you ask the algorithm to define this item, this uh, algorithm collect all the items, build those areas, and only after that compare this item with uh, all these uh, vectors. And uh, w the um, benefits of this solution approach is that if you have late with each new execution, the machine learning will consider only new and the latest execution and skip the previous execution for analysis. So you can basically define for, for it, use 100 previous execution to analyze or use just 10 previous execution for analysis and do not uh, like consider results which was actual one year ago. Um, so how we did it and how we implement it and how it works from the uh, programming perspective. Well, um, we have the report portal API and we put the Elastic Engine which collects uh, these logs, those uh, filtered logs or let's say these dried logs uh, with removed informational noise. And we created uh, yet another microservice which stays between the API and the Elastic. And this service analyzer helps us to make the uh, prepared queries inside the Elastic, which uses the uh, algorithm, algorithms of the machine learning. And uh, yes, we did it in uh, Go language, uh, so it helps us to save the memory usage for the report portal. So to make the uh, elastic search vectorize the uh, stack trace, you have to use index. Index it is the process uh, which help convert your text stack trace text into the vectorized. Uh, I mean, yeah, vectorized vector. So basically, it converts the uh, text into the uh, matrix of the TF IDF indexes for each particular word. And uh, this is creates the multi dimensional, multi dimensional space inside the multi dimensional vector in multi dimensional space inside the index, index structure. And the main thing which is used here is the analyzer. The uh, elastic search have own uh, vectorized, vectorized uh, process which can make this uh, vector with TFIDF index. So the main uh, data we put inside the elastic engine is uh, that we put the launch name, the test case name, the issue type it has, the log level of it, and also the message. The message of your logs, which is cleared and uh, vectorized. The structure of the uh, analyzer, the analyzer auto autonomy, consists of the next part. It uses the character filter, tokenizer, and token filter. The, the character filter is the filter which helps us to remove all those braces, columns, semicolons, uh, all those useless symbols in text, in stream of the text. Also, it helps to replace uh, the capitalized uh, letters with this lowercase. Then we have the tokenizer. And the tokenizer, it is the uh, process which separate each word from another. Uh, as a sample tokenizer, it can use just like separate the words based on the uh, space. Then you also can use the more intellectual tokenizers, which use the uh, English based uh, orthographic 
to separate the words. You also can put any other types of the tokenizers, and this actually helps you to divide your stream of the text to the separate terms, to the separate words. Uh, and also you can have the token filter, which can uh, replace particular words, for example, like the, a, and, or, and remove those words from your uh, token streams. And so this analyzer helps to clean the text before it will be vectorized. Uh, as soon as they, it vectorized and saved as a TF and DF uh, mat matri matrix in uh, Elasticsearch, we will call uh, the query from the Elasticsearch, which will return as the 10 neighbors for the particular uh, equality uh, of the text. So we, the bool query consists of the two parts. It should, mu uh, must contain, it must not contain, and should be like that. So we ask uh, in this example, 10 items. So like we get, take 10 neighbors uh, in those uh, vectorized uh, space, which is equal to our particular fail. To, which is equal to our latest fail, which we need to categorize. Uh, it must not contain the items which are not investigated. So we ex exclude everything which is not categorized yet. Uh, it must contain uh, the lock level should be like more than four. Uh, okay, that's, the lock level should be uh, failed. It also should have the field issue type, so it basically should be categorized. And it, for more improvement, we also use the boost algorithm to boost the uh, purity for the items which have the equal lunch name, they also which have the equal name, and put, uh, stored in the same place of the structure. And now we do the MLT request. So MLT request, it is the request which use the uh, TF IDF mat matrix, matrix to find the most equal item. And we are looking for equality of the 90%. So basically that means that we need those vectors which are not, uh, which, which distance, dif distance of the difference, no more than 10% of the cosinus distance of this vector. Yeah, guys, I know <laughs> it sounds ridiculous, but uh, just in simple words, it sounds like it's that those vectors are not uh, different for more than 10% from this item. And we do this MLT request, which returns us the 10 items. And according to the boosted priorities for particular items, uh, the first item in this row will be the most closest item based on the machine learning algorithm. And we take this item uh, as a equal fail and copy all the, uh, related resolution, comments, bugs, and everything you have assigned for this particular fail to the, your latest execution. True. Uh, that is done for machine learning. And now the challenges, uh, what we have met with the machine learning. Uh, first of all, the machine learning uh, can degradate. So the training set can degradate with the time. And if nobody checked the result, uh, it will be useless in a couple of months. So basically that means that sometimes you have to uh, recheck and clarify the analysis uh, of the machine learning. Uh, learning all this need trainer. For any kind of the machine learning, you need the trainer, which will, first of all, train it at the initial stages, and all this will check uh, for the next iterations. The machine learning works perfectly in such a cases when uh, the state will never change. For example, like a basic example for it, the machine learning can easily uh, define the, the which color uh, right now, I don't know, for the, um, for the balls or for the uh, 
okay, let's say uh, the machine learning pre can pretty easily define the size of the uh, car. Is it a uh, little car or big car? And if nothing will change in sizes of this car for, for ages, it will never need a trainer to uh, check the results. It will always use just once completed training set and will easily define the any size of the car uh, for for ages. But if you will, we will have appearing uh, of a new cars which had different size than it has in training set, it can bring the errors inside the decisions. And the problem is if the errors appears and if nobody checked those errors, the error of influence grows with each new iteration. <clears throat> and basically that means that if nobody checked the, those iterations after 100 times, for example, it can really start to degradate quickly. So basically we need to find something which will reduce the degradation uh, ratio for the analysis. And uh, as a first solution, we will mark all the items which are analyzed by the machine learning with a, a symbol. That means that if this is made uh, by machine learning, uh, this decision uh, is only on uh, machine side. And uh, for those items which will be reviewed by the engineer, we'll put that uh, human input made here. And that means that priority for those items is more than priority for items which was analyzed only by the machine learning. And uh, hopefully will this will increase the, uh, like not like increase, but remove the degradation uh, part for the machine learning algorithms. And the problem also we find that sometimes you need to flush training. And um, with this point we will work as I said, once again, with the um, point, then uh, we will prioritize and boost the priority for the items which analyzed by the human, not by, not by the machine learning. And hopefully in this case, it will pr prioritize and boost only the uh, those items which analyzed by the humans. Well, uh, once again, it's open sourced. It will be available for everyone. This part can also be used not only like a part of the report portal, but also as a separate mechanism, and you can integrate it with your own logs. Well, it is the report portal, and uh, I need to mention that we have the growing community around our tool. You can find us on a Facebook. We also have the YouTube channel with the trainings, with the details, with the presentations. We have the pretty we uh, beacon growing community in Slack where you can find all our users from different regions, also IPAM support placed here. And you also can ask the questions and get the answers, not from only our team, but from the community. Also you can follow the Twitter, the VK uh, and the GitHub to find the news. And the one main links for you guys is the reportportal.io. It is the place where you can find the, all the links for the all our social net, social networks. That is it, uh, guys. Now I will switch to the uh, question questions, and uh, you can ask your questions, guys. Um, when you will try it uh, for your project, do not hesitate uh, to join the chat. Uh, we can share the materials, the training materials with you. Uh, we can make the presentation for your client and also, uh, well, do everything you need to try this thing. And to compare it with the Allure, as I said, the Allure is really the thing uh, of different level. The Allure is the simple representation uh, of one particular execution uh, and the report portal is the server uh, based on the microservices which are scalable which have all this history which can have the machine learning which can analyze your fails which can int have integrations with different other systems can be a part of your ci cd uh, it's really much more bigger thing which is when just the representation of the Allure. And um, I, I can say that we already have the evidence when projects really switch from the Allure report to the report portal 
and they really love report portal more than uh, Allure because it has much more capabilities, much more features, and it's really useful for the managers. And no, because Allure is mostly used uh, by the uh, engineers, not on, not like managers. Okay, now uh, the questions. Uh, the question about Allure have answered it. Okay, is it possible? Uh, is it possible uh, to build graphics of test automation efficiency metrics? Yes, uh, the idea we uh, keep inside the report portal is to represent the key metrics of your test automation. So basically, yes, you can build it. Uh, the only reason when I can say you know for this, uh, if you have something specific. But still, if you if it required for your client, um, there are two ways. You can contribute by your own to add this part, or you can uh, request the implementation of this particular widget for your team. And uh, just a like, small billable implementation for your client, for your customer, and we will add it into the... Uh, report portal as a presentation, uh, as a uh, yet another widget, and th this will represent you everything you need. Um, does report portal have deployment instructions? Where I can find it? Yes, it has the deployment instructions, uh, and uh, uh, hopefully the uh, my browser will be available for you right now. So as I said, the main link uh, is the GitHub report portal report portal. Uh, so the instructions for the deployment uh, here at the main, when you will find the report portal, here's the main branch, click report portal, and you will see installation steps here, how you can make it. And also at the same time at the landing page, you can find the documentation part. And uh, here is the installation part. So how to install Docker, how to deploy the report portal with all the steps, uh, the main, like cheat sheet for main comments with Docker, additional parameters, production deployment description, SSL, so, uh, security certificate, and so on and so forth. So like uh, we have the documentation and just find it at the documentation part of the report portal I own. Um, where is, where is uh, go to training the questions. Uh, okay, can I use um, it uh, only with Selenium or with, with Protractor, Cucumber? Yes, you can use it with Selenium, Protractor, Cucumber, integration test. Uh, you can use a, a Java with Java platform, C Sharp, uh, with .NET, Ruby, uh, JavaScript, uh, my God, with any platform. Any platform can be used, even SOAP UI uh, can work with the report portal. And the uh, why you can do it, uh, it's because of the open platform, which can be integrated with any any solution and any language. So, because report portal is the web service and you just send the results into the web service. And just to give you the understanding how many uh, integrations we have for now, I will, write it in a search here uh, on github and you can see the agents uh, like agent for python python java js java ruby js.net java java net net ready api js.net scala java net P, even php and this part is uh, as you can see implemented by the community uh, and uh, we have those uh, placed in our a repository but also we have in uh, like in external repositories made by our community and currently we're collecting it to the, to the one page to represent all the integrations we have so basic answer you can integrate it with any platform and uh, just for some platforms we have no yet uh, integrations it's pretty easy to implement them uh, just using as example already existing and just extend the number of it the next question, can we build a chart with automation bugs and product bugs depending uh, on a long time? Uh, for now, not, 
uh, but we right now working on idea to e implement sub lunch widgets and uh, those sub lunch widgets will uh, have those uh, widgets so basically in in sub lunch widget you can configure to represent it but for in current set uh, in current latest build there is no uh, chart which like uh, give you as it is but you can because uh, currently widgets built on the idea and on the statistics of uh, launches and with sub launches widget we will extend and and widgets which will be built on the statistics of uh, test cases inside one particular execution does report portal catch the situation when test uh, is failed because of the different reason than previously uh, well a good question um, not right now uh, it will not show you like uh, in a separate widget but you can see it uh, with the matrix uh, with we call it a history matrix let me just show you the example open any project so for particular launches you can open the history matrix and find uh, how the state of those test cases was uh, and here the status is for the level of uh, suits let's find some uh, test cases open the history matrix and you can see uh, not only the history like for every single test case you can see the history line how it was switched uh, from one reason to another from past to failed but you also with history view uh, matrix you can see uh, how would, for the list of the test cases for the next release we are planning to add the flaky tests widget but the flaky test is just showing how many times it switched from the uh, failed to past or from past to fail from from skip to failed so the most switchable test case is the most flakiest test but for the um, items which switch from for example from product back to automation back uh, we have no it as it is but you can see it with such a view well uh, the next question uh, do report portal works with uh, jenkins um, basic question for uh, the I, Ivan I hopefully you still here the basic question is yes it works with Jenkins and by the way we have even the plugin for the Jenkins but the point about that the report portal does not depend on the CI tool which executed because report portal adapters lives inside of the scope of the test automation so the agents of the report portal they will be born inside the process of the test automation and the test automation does not depend who executed so a test automation can be executed whatever by Jenkins by team city or even manually on your local environment and as soon as it uh, will be executed the agent will born inside the uh, report uh, inside the uh, process of your test automation and will send result to the report, report portal so the basic question yes it it works with the Jenkins and the most common uh, uh, let's say way to use it uh, report portal works with Jenkins and at the same time right from the Jenkins you can add the specific steps like for example the step uh, after the job completed you can put the request to the request to the report portal server via the curl or whatever and even request the data from the report portal inside the Jenkins for example like uh, ask the passing rate for the particular um, selection of the job of, of the executions which belong to a particular uh, build number okay then next uh, what databases does it use for storing all the data uh, it uses the mongodb no sql uh, database and uh, this um, maybe we will change it to the um, postgres 
pretty soon. The problem is that MongoDB is like most uncontrollable by the resources. It really makes the super fast writing for all the data from all the test automation, but uh, it's really hard to control in, in perspective of the memory usage. And it's, this is the problem for the open source uh, deployment, the guys from the open source for the small companies, because IPAM is big, IPAM can have a lot of virtual environment, but for small companies, it is a problem. And currently, yes, it works on the NoSQL database, uh, MongoDB, and we planning to replace it with the uh, Postgres. Does the report portal works with JUnit 5? Um, not for now, uh, but we considering to implement it soon. The problem, the point which stops us to implement it uh, today, because uh, there is no many uh, production projects which stays with the uh, J unit. And uh, you can really contribute and take our uh, J unit 4 integration and extend it for the J unit 5. Because uh, in this case, you will have like good example how it works and you can just extend it to work with the J unit. It's pretty easy and uh, you will, well, you can create, became the contributor of the report portal and the open source contributor and uh, add it for us. We have it in a backlog, but uh, not like planned uh, for the next uh, iterations. Is a ma machine learning feature enabled in the report portal prod instance only, or it can be turned on the customer in, uh, RP instances, including docking, Docker containers? Uh, the machine learning will be uh, available for each deployment. Uh, not only for EPUM production, but it also will be a part of the uh, on client side installations. It will be available via the Docker containers as well. And uh, currently, uh, it is not finally released. It, uh, we will release final versions uh, pretty soon. We currently you know, like making the uh, testing stages of it because it's really hard to test the ml but it will be re re it will be released pretty soon and it will be available on the pump prod and uh, uh, available for on-premises installation for clients as well but for now inside the report portal production instance we we have already the basic mechanism uh, it's not so uh, smart as the machine learning but it it's like i will say it it's like the first step was the first step of the, for the machine learning it all always and uh, already does the job of the analysis and uh, you can all already use it and try it but the machine the uh, exact machine learning will be available soon with next uh, uh, release which will be maybe in two weeks or so uh, we want to integrate the report portal with a Node.js based Nightwatch framework, JavaScript automation. Where can we look for the integration steps? Are there any de dedicated supporting engineers for us with Napalm to help uh, putting the integration with the report portal together? Well, for the net, we have a list of the Node.js uh, integrations already. Nightwatch is uh, in our um backlog in in the line uh with upgrading rp code base how often are the docker images updated we update the docker images with each new release uh and uh, for update update mechanism you just need to like we uh, suggest to make the dump of the database so like back up your database it's it pretty easy and can be done with a cheat sheet which is available uh, on report portal documentation page let me open it up report portal documentation um, installation steps cheat sheet and here it is even a pdf file uh, so here you have um, the backup and restore commands. It's just for the uh, to be to feel your the safe and uh, to update the inst uh, the report portal. You just need to download the latest uh, version of the compose file, which will uh, be available on the GitHub. 
So we are just uh, for each new release, we have the uh, link to the latest compose file. For example, 3.1, we just, uh, it's closed. Here it is. Or you can just open the uh, code and at in the main master branch, this uh, Docker compose file, it always has the latest uh, numbers. And the same, like you can use this uh, get command to just download the required uh, latest compose file. And just execute the Docker update and Docker install, and it will replace and do the, does the all required um, updates in your database. How often we do release uh, um, features and update containers? Maybe uh, once per two months or so, and once per six months, so like uh, twice a year we release the major versions with huge improvements. How much time did it take to train the IE? Well, for the gradient boosting, it really, uh, oh, I, I mean, uh, I, I guess uh, in this question is in perspective of, of your usage of the report portal. It's not really a long time and uh, it will take the, uh, and use the results of the execution right after you will have the first execution. So basically there is no, since it's lazy, we use the lazy uh, way of the training. Uh, there is no need to train it before. And as, so, as soon as you will have the first execution, the second execution will already use these algorithms uh, and you will, search for the equal fails in previous execution. So almost like nothing, almost like no time to for you to implement, to learn and train the IE. Installer P in closed customer perimeter, could we find all artifacts on GitHub? What about Elastic? Yes, uh, everything that will be available on GitHub. Elastic is also the um, image at the Docker uh, hub, the same place where all the images for the report portal placed. So it's, uh, it will be available. Uh, so like to include the elastic, what we need to do to include elastic into the deployment of the report portal, we just need to add this uh, description of this image inside the uh, Docker Compose file. So if you have it inside it, uh, the Docker will download it from the Docker hub and that's it. So basically when the uh, RP with Elastic and ML will be released, it will have all, re have, have all required um, descriptions in Docker Compose. It, and uh, just use the Docker Compose app to download everything and install it on, on customer side. Do we, uh, do we can use Logstash as tokenizer? Yes, we can, but we just right now we do not uh, did not uh, try it. So maybe it's, it's the point for improvements and to play with it. What environment require uh, what, what environment requirements does RP have? The uh, environment requirements can be found on a GitHub. Uh, Where is my GitHub? Close it down. Here it is um, like customized steps and details, but it's here in the table. So for the small team and demo set, this one, and for the production environment, we recommend you to use uh, virtual machines with uh, like uh, RAM about 16 gigabytes. Uh, but for the minimal environment to play and work, uh, it's four gigabytes of RAM will be enough to use, recommended is eight gigabytes. For the production with a huge load, like 16 gigabytes of RAM. 
you can find this uh, at report portal, report portal wiki page. Uh, will ML be able to distinguish between similar errors that are raised from different places uh, with the same file? Yes, we will add the grouping functionality which will uh, show you like the widget for the particular launch uh, which will group the similar fails and basically you will see that okay if you have uh, in this particular fail you have uh, like six fails because of this reason similar reason these fails and it will uh, even group an investigate not investigated items so this is the feature which was requested pretty long time ago and it's a really useful feature and uh, you will just open up this view and you will see that okay you have one uh, for example 50 not investigated items and 10 of them belongs to this reason uh, five of them belongs to this reason and just in one click you can set the um, one this uh, like defect type for all those reasons just in one click uh, this, I, this IE will be common for report portal or the, for the future of, or in the future could we improve or add configuration which attitude to test frameworks which takes into account features and framework yes uh, it will be config, configurable uh, for the first iteration uh, it will has uh, let's say like hard-coded uh, parameters for search but for the next iterations we will make it configurable and that means you can uh, configure the rate of equality the particular the distance of those uh, distance of the equality the uh, decision boundaries rate and the so all the stuff which uh, can be configured in, on, in those uh, queries we will make uh, available for configuration Next question, why you just not provide the rule set, which can be configured per project and uh, as you will do, per, and issue type will be defined by the rules. Well, uh, we move it uh, iterate, iteratively. We will release the thing which uh, like common for everyone. And then, as I said, we'll make available all these configuration rules for each particular project separately. Just a few more questions, guys. How you tested your machine learning features? Is it stable or is it just like better functionality? No, it's not better functionality, it's stable. And uh, the main uh, acceptance for it to work with the same like it worked uh, with before uh, with simple implementation. Uh, but just with more accurate results. Uh, so it's stable, it's not better functionality. We will release the stable functionality for that. Is it possible to create isolated user group for different projects? Um, not for now. Uh, we have this request on a GitHub uh, to, to make the groups at the project, but for now you can isolate different projects uh, with uh, uh, filters. So at report portal, you can put the particular tag for the execution. For example, this execution belongs to team A and this belongs to team B and just make the filter which will show you only the team A for it. And so like everyone will join the uh, report portal and then choose okay I'm from team A and he, he will see all the results related to the team A only. Thank you very much. Thank you guys. Uh, how efficiently you how efficiently use RP on project with low test result review culture. Whoa uh, it is actually the uh, a good point for the report portal to step in because report portal will help you to improve this culture. And um, uh, Ivan Protasov asked this question. Uh, please contact me directly and uh, we can uh, help you and see what you have 
for the for your project and help you with the next steps but uh, it is actually the real place for the report portal to make uh, state of the automation visible for your project to make it visible not for only for test of the engineers but for the uh, developers for the managers for team leads and uh, the most uh, complicated part of it it's like it also requires the managerial steps for it so like you have to add the inside your processes the way when uh, engineers the developers will check the results as well uh, and check the results of the test automation for particular build and so on and so forth Next, uh, currently all features available as free. As, is there any chain, chance any advanced features make available on payment only? Uh, for now, there is no, uh, it's a question from Suresh, uh, there is no uh, such an idea uh, to make anything uh, billable. Uh, the, we choose another way to earn the money for the team we choose the way for to make the billable support so basically all the application will stay for free for uh, at any time but for the clients we can provide the billable support uh, of their own instance and also we can provide the billable implementation for a particular request or particular feature so basically that means and the most common uh, way for it for example some of the clients need the type of the widget and type of the report they used to use at the project and say so, and they just want have the equal inside the report portal and this is the place where we implement those features for them on a billable um, scope of work and also we put those parts in open source as well and the other option we are uh, cons uh, considering to use for the billable part, we're considering to build the uh, SaaS environment. So SaaS means software as a service. In this case, application is free, but you pay for usage of the environment. Because um, to have a really powerful environment which can handle a lot of projects at the same time, you have to have uh, powerful uh, virtual machines and this costs money and for example uh, to use your to have your own uh, virtual machine powerful virtual machine will cost you 200 bucks per month we can provide you access uh, for to our instance just for 100 per month it and this much much more cheaper for you twice cheaper but for us since we will have a really huge cluster distributed cluster which can handle dozens of projects hundreds and thousands of projects uh, in this case it's, it's cheaper for us to utilize all this huge power uh, for everyone and give this access cheaper for the clients so there is two ways like billable support and uh, SaaS but still we have the report rp.epan.com which is free for clients so basic answer for your question we do not plan to have the billable features it will remain the free with any feature can i start a test run from the report portal uh, no the report portal is a driven tool so it only receives the results from different sources uh, but there is an idea on uh, github and actually guys are trying to implement uh the additional functionality the integration with the jenkins why they separate uh, um, service microservice which will be connected to the jenkins and uh, if it will be made by those guys they want to add uh, additional button for every launch so just you can click and relaunch re-execute your particular job at the jenkins but is the it, it is the part of the uh, open source community contribution uh, we help them but do not uh, like implement it with our team and um, initially the report portal uh, was developed as a driven tool 
So it only receives the results from different sources, uh, no matter who executes it. So if Jenkins execute your test cases, you execute it manually, lo locally, or at any other environment you execute it. You just receive all results in one place here. What will happen when uh, we run the same test during the build for several times? Uh, good question from Anton uh, Naidanov. Uh, for now, with this uh, current release, it will be represented like yet another test case. So basically, when you will have the reruns, it will be uh, represented as an additional test case. But currently, uh, we are working on retry functionality, and it will be available uh, with the ML as well at the, at the release 4.0. And this functionality will show it as a single test case, but with uh, the retries. So the retry functionality will be introduced with uh, 4.0 version. Will the result be rewritten or added as separate? Uh, as I said, it will be right now. It will be added as separate, but uh, with new functionality, it will be uh, shown as uh, the retry. So it will show you all the retries, and as uh, for the consideration, will be taken on the latest execution. But also, we are gonna have the rerun functionality, which will uh, make you able to uh, merge the execution. So, like you can make the launch not like execute it in separate launch but re-execute re the launch inside the existing launch and this will replace the results and like it will help you to build all the green execution does the report portal use prediction ability of ml and can rp do the regression analysis well prediction Prediction is not currently on our plate uh, to go as the next thing, but uh, we, as soon after the release of the categorization, we will consider it uh, to work with. And the main place for prediction will be uh, placed around the application to uh, logs. So it, this is, that is uh, uh, the next idea and the next uh, huge epic for the report portal. We will try to add and analyze not only the test automation logs, but also use the second data source as the application logs. So basically that means that at the same time when you run the uh, automation, uh, report portal will collect the automation logs and the application logs on the server side or maybe even if you test the hardware you can collect the application logs the automation logs and hardware logs and in case if we will see the problems uh, in application logs which was uh, like uh, colorated with uh, production problems production bugs in test automation, we will predict and mark those items as uh, you probably may have the production bugs in this place based on the uh, application logs. It is the big thing, uh, it is the big epic, and uh, it will really, I, th I, th I guess, it will lead us to um, a review and a real big refactoring of UI. So how we can make it possible to work with the two data sources of logs. But this is the idea and maybe the direction for the next uh, feature development for the report portal. That's a good question, by the way. So that is it. But that was the final question. Um, thank you guys a lot. I, and I can think we can finalize it. So once again, do not hesitate to visit our um, landing page uh, at uh, reportportal.io. Uh, give us some stars at the GitHub. Join our Facebook, Slack. By the way, we have a pretty huge community in Slack, as you can see here, uh, where all the, I, you can ask any question and uh, the team and community will help you. Uh, with next steps. So please join uh, 
and thank you.